Hello, um, I think I can unmute myself now. Uh, my name is Dr Charlotte Crofts and I am from the filmmaking department. I'm an associate professor of filmmaking and I am delighted to welcome one of our uh, alumni, um, Elias Williams, um, who is going to be doing the Inspire Me talk today. Um, I've been asked to let you know that this is being recorded um, and that this will be saved to the Inspire Me homepage and there will be a podcast made of it. So a link about that will be shared at the end. So what I'm going to do is just going to introduce Elias briefly. He's going to do a short presentation talk and then there'll be an opportunity to ask questions in the question function and I'll feed those to Elias at the end and we can probe him about how he got where he is today and where he's going next. Um, so Elias did the filmmaking degree. I can't remember exactly when he graduated, but it's a couple of years ago because you've been illustrious since then. Um, so yeah, I think he graduated in 2018 with a first class honours. I've got it all written down here. Um, but what I find really fascinating about Elias, and what I'm really looking forward to hearing more about, is that he's kind of developing an academic career through doing an MA and uh, an MPhil, which he's just submitted and he's starting to get into teaching whilst also maintaining his filmmaking and also um, a collaboration with his brother, brother Timon, who, Timon, who did a, the other, uh, the younger brother who did the degree as well. So that juggling of filmmaking and um, your academic side is something I'm really excited to hear more about. Um, so he has made um, various shorts since leaving filmmaking, uh, including a random acts for Channel 4 and BBC New Creatives. And he's recently just completed um, a feature um, in collaboration with your brother. Um, and um, that's called My Summer in Oxford, I think. I think you'll tell us about that. Um, so I'm really excited to hear about that and that kind of collaboration as well and, and keeping it in the family. Um, so he also, the other string to his bow is that he set up Mandemhood, which is a um, kind of a platform for young men of colour to discuss various themes and issues. Um, and I think that's also another thing I'm really keen to hear more about because that's ongoing. Um, so I think I've kind of touched on a few things. Hopefully you'll, you'll bring all these up in your talk and then we can ask questions at the end. I can already see questions coming in. Um, so I'll hand over to you now, Elias. I'll mute myself, um, switch my camera off, and I'm um, really excited to have you. And let's give him a big welcome, everybody. Cool. Thank you very much for that lovely introduction, Charlotte. I appreciate that. I think I'm off mute, off mute now, but please do let me know if I'm not. Um, yeah, so so my name's Elias. I'm a filmmaker, a BFI Academy mentor, and as of tomorrow, a history tutor at Bristol University. Um, as Charlotte mentioned, I'm also the founder of an online media platform called Mandem. And um, yeah, feel free to browse through the website if you don't want to stare at my face for 20 minutes straight. Uh, the URL is uh, mandemhood.com, which is M A N. D E M H O O D dot com. Um, yeah, I've made short films that have been supported by the BBC and Channel 4, and alongside my brother, who's also a filmmaker, I've recently completed my first no budget feature film, which is called Last Summer in Oxford. Um, and it's like a coming of age comedy uh, about me and my brother's upbringing, essentially. Um, yeah, over the last few years, uh, like the, the media platform Mandem, we've hosted some big panel led events where race, masculinity and gender have been discussed in depth. We've held events in London and Bristol and hosted some exciting guests like Gary Young and rapper and activist Loki. Um, and yeah, just most recently, I've just just finished my second history masters exploring 1930s Hollywood and representations of race and sexuality in early horror films. Um, it all sounds great on paper, but it's been it's been a long old slog to where I am today. Um, so for this event, I'm I'm essentially mainly going to talk about my journey from being pretty disillusioned with the education system and almost failing um, all my A levels to where I'm at now, and how my time at UE has, has helped me get to where I'm at now as well. Uh, 
throughout I've touched on areas where the university system gave me great support, facilitated a space for me to take risks and allowed me to network like a madman essentially, all in the hope that my experience inspires you all to make the most of your time at UWE. Um, the journey to where, I'm, where I am now is quite complicated and, and a bit random and it's definitely not a route I'd recommend for everyone. Um, there's definitely been a bit of luck involved too. However, what I've learned along the way is certainly applicable to a range of different university experiences. So even if you're not as crazy as me, there's probably something in my rambling that you'll find useful. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd start, start talking a bit about my A-levels. So um, I totally hated sick form. I got pretty weak grades uh, that didn't really reflect my ability at all. But like many of my peers, I'd, I'd chosen academic subjects that were supposed to get me into a good uni, despite finding the subjects totally boring. Um, so I ended up getting pretty dead grades. Uh, I think I got DED, which literally spells dead almost. But uh, thanks to thanks to some encouragement from uh, my mates at the time, I applied for uni anyway. Uh, in my gap year and was given an offer by London Metropolitan University to study international relations, peace and conflict studies. It was a really interesting course, um, but I soon realised it was gearing me towards a job in an embassy or an office. So after discovering that my younger brother had applied to study film in Nottingham, as the jealous older brother I am, I kind of decided um, that there was no way he was going to do something more interesting than me. So I so I tried to apply for other film courses in in London at different universities. Um, and it just so happened that UE was was the only university outside of London that I applied for. And thank God, because UE was the, the only uni that actually gave me an interview. Um, and that, that's a credit to UE's philosophy of giving misfits like me a chance, despite having uh, weaker A-levels. Um, so yeah, on, on the day of my interview at UE, I, I woke up at 5 a.m., caught my train to Bristol and, and just managed to do really well in the interview. Um, I'd, I'd made a bunch of films in preparation for the, for the interview and um, yeah, thankfully the film lecturer who interviewed me, Alistair Oldham, liked my films. Um, yeah, so I was, I was super buzzed at the time. And yeah, it felt like a, a, a massive second chance had been handed to me. Um, yeah, the film, the film course at UWE was and still is, I'm sure, brilliant. It's very practical and hands on, um, great equipment and staff. And, and it is just Bristol is just a great city for filmmaking, too. Um, when I when I arrived on the course um, in my first year, I, I made it my prerogative to put myself forward to direct projects um, and I began making a strong effort to network in the city. Um, I made contact with a Bristol musician who kindly let me make a music video for him. And importantly, I made it my priority to to stay active, active creatively outside of uni after realising how competitive the film industry was. Um, the music video with the Bristol musician was popular and, and kind of opened the door for me to make another music video with some more established artists in Bristol. Uh, and at this time, I was kind of just running around on my own with a tripod and a, and a DSLR. Um, but because I had quite good editing skills, I could kind of glam up the videos a bit on my laptop. Um, but essentially, the point is I, I came to you with, with a very proactive mindset. Um, like grateful for the kind of second chance I felt I'd been given. But it was it was second year when it all it all really kicked off for me, I think. Um, I was enjoying myself creatively, but I felt a little understimulated uh, politically. Because um, obviously I'd chosen international relations at London Met because I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about current affairs and, and race related issues. Uh, so in my second year, I started to attend more um, kind of race related networking events. Uh, and at this time, it was around 2016, it was 2016, and the Black Lives Matter conversation was kind of gaining momentum 
and there were there were a lot of conversations about the lack of diversity in the media and new discussions about masculinity and feminism were emerging at that time too and all of it intrigued me greatly so i decided to figure out a way that i could funnel all of my interests into a creative project um, outside of uni essentially while i was at uni uh, so taking inspiration from an online mag called Gaudem that actually also came out of Bristol and focused on issues affecting women of colour. Um, I decided that like a male equivalent would be a cool idea. So I went around kind of Bristol's creative community um, and particularly like the black creative community pitching my idea of, of a media platform for young men of colour. Um, and everyone was supported, in, in, um, everyone was supportive and including my UE lecturers and in particular, it was the, the UE diversity officer at the time that was a massive help. Uh, and eventually I gathered, yeah, I gathered loads of content, articles, interviews, film content, uh, and launched the platform in April 2017, just as my second year was coming to an end. Um, I can't emphasize enough the, the importance of the support I received from UE staff and facilities during this time. Uh, it was the UE section of the Arnolfini, which is which is an art gallery by the harbour, um, was where we held our first Mandem event. And this was so important because it, it helped to gain the attention of the Arnolfini institution, who would later fully support other events and, and even employ me on an art workshop programme. Um, my senior lecturer, uh, at the time as well helped help me with sorting out room bookings via UE as well um, and I and I even managed to incorporate um, the media platform into into my uni work which was great so one key thing to remember is that the things you do outside of uni can be incorporated into your coursework uh, the UE diversity officer at the time I'm pretty sure that's a, there's a different title for that now um, it was a guy called Alex Mamoris, and yeah, he, he'd been inc incredibly helpful in connecting me with other black creators in the city. And on top of that, the president of the UE Students Union was also super helpful at the time as well, and had helped organize a panel event um, at the SU building. And then later, UE Equity, which is like a uni led diversity scheme, also supported me with with another event down the line um yeah i confess with a heavy heart that i had i had also done some networking with uni of bristol students but i don't think that's a bad thing i wasn't the only one at the time trying to build like into uni connections um, and we figured that it was it was actually a good thing to try and build a few bridges between the unis especially between black students who felt marginalized um, instead of kind of seeing them as rivals um, I'm afraid I've, do I've joined the dark side for my postgrad studies, but I'll get, I'll get more into that later. Uh, yeah, the Manda media platform aside, I also have to emphasize how good, uh, like my, my course at UE was in, in terms of connecting us with the prospective working world and, and organizations in the city of Bristol. I think particularly my course, I can speak for my course, but I had friends with similar experiences as well at the time. But yeah, UE was great in terms of its connections with the city and and useful organisations in the city for for work experience opportunities and whatnot. And my uh, my my Channel Four Random Max film kind of only came about because the film course had connections with the the company that facilitated the films, Calling the Shots, which is a, a Bristol uh, production company. Um, and yeah, they would always bring in really, really great guest speakers um, and all of that jazz. Long story short, my positive experience as a UE student was, was pretty pivotal to helping me on my journey. And I'm not just saying that because this is an alumni talk, I'm, I'm genuinely grateful. And it's great to know that the support is there if you need it. Uh, like when I, was, when I was reluctant to go to university as like a miserable A-level student, one of my school teachers had said that I needn't go to uni for the degree, just for the experience and the connections that I'd build. Um, and, and she was totally right. And of course, your degree is important too, don't get me wrong, but if you're like me, 
and you know the nightlife's fun but not everything don't be afraid to start like making connections outside the uni and really integrating yourself with the city of Bristol because it is such a great city. Um, you'll find that everyone in Bristol is very welcoming to keen and proactive students who want to connect. Um, there were plenty of other students I knew who were similar to me at the time and, and didn't hesitate to make connections with like Bristol organisations. Um, and like networking can seem very daunting, but it just takes a little confidence and self-belief and, and not all of it will be fun. You'll meet plenty of donuts who will be no value to you whatsoever. But you know, you can you can treat those those occasions as practice. And the most important thing for me when networking was was having something to pitch or share with people. Uh, it's not it's not essential, but I think if you have a little something you're working on in private or a little idea that excites you, um, that that can always be a great conversation starter. Off the top of my head, a few organisations worth having on your radar um, in Bristol are the Arnolfini Watershed, Rife Magazine, the Bristol Cable and Bristol 24-7. Um, they they all often support students, uh, whether through like volunteering opportunities or networking events, etc. Particularly for like creative students. For film students specifically, yeah, I definitely recommend trying to get in touch with Calling the Shots. I think they're based at Spike Island, which is like a, a UE building as well, I believe. Um, there's also a couple of film festivals worth checking out. Encounters Film Festival and Africa Eye Film Festival are worth keeping an eye on. Um, so now I'll smoothly transition into what I did post uni. Uh, it's worth mentioning a lot of my proactive energy during uni occurred with an awareness that, that I wanted to feel secure after finishing uni and not kind of running around like a headless chicken looking for a job. Um, so some, so yeah, one of my biggest words of advice is, is, is try not to be complacent at uni. Um, obviously you're, you know, you're there to have fun as well, but, um, for me, second year was a, was a good time to really take things a little bit more seriously. Though you should also take things seriously in first year, of course. Um, but yeah, make, make your life easier for when you finish uni by being proactive while you while you have the safety net of, of university essentially it'd be great if uni was forever and and trust me I've, I've rinsed it out longer than most but it's not it's not forever and it's important to keep that in mind i think if you actually care about ending up somewhere that you want to be um so in in my final year at ue i decided that i wanted to continue my studies with a master's uh, I chose to do a history MA at Bristol Uni because a lot of my films had been related to historical narratives and I kind of wanted to consolidate a bit of my knowledge. Um, I didn't choose Bristol over UE because UE isn't brilliant. I simply wanted like a bit of a change of scene and, and to kind of build some new connections in new circles. I'm definitely a, a UE boy at heart. And I was actually thinking about trash talking Bristol Uni a little bit, but it probably isn't the wisest thing to do considering the fact I'm on their payroll at the moment. Um, in, all, in all seriousness, doing a master's was very useful because it gave me the free time and flexibility I needed to maintain the Manda media platform um, while continuing to host events, etc. Uh, and actually, I was still connected to UE after I left because I was still doing events in conjunction with UE and networking with UE students at the time. Uh, and, and I also did some mentoring work at Arnolfini that, only, that I only received because UE had initially connected me with the venue. Um, after the masters, the first masters, I stayed in Bristol and got a job as a development researcher at Drummer Television in Redland, while also doing some film mentoring work at the watershed. Uh, I was super lucky to get the job at Drummer, but again, it, it came about as a result of prior networking. Uh, that, that another thing about networking is it, it does all kind of build up and there is a level of like delayed gratification. So like honestly, sometimes it can take like two or three years 
for the fruits of one random networking connection to emerge. Um, so you, you shouldn't almost expect kind of results immediately after after going to a networking event, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the reason, yeah, the reason I kind of I kind of got the job at Drummer was because I'd already built a bit of a name for myself in Bristol, um, resulting from all the work I'd, I'd put in during my time as a student. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed my time at Drummer. It was a great experience. And it's also it's also important to go into your first post uni job very humble, I think. And uh, don't don't worry if the job isn't quite what you'd hoped it would be. I think you'll always have the chance to move up and and kind of you know move up the ladder if your if your attitude is right and you work hard. Um, again, I was lucky because in in film in filmmaking, most people kind of have to start off as as runners, or a lot of people do. Um, but I, while I was at uni, I made it. I made sure that I, I had a little go at running while I was there, um, and kind of realised it wasn't something I wanted to do. So when when I finished, I kind of knew I could be a bit more selective in what I was going for. Wow, it feels like I've been talking for ages. I hope no one's getting bored. Um, we're nearly, we're coming to the end. So anyway, 2020 came around and swept us all off our feet, to say the least. Uh, my contract at Drama came to an end, but luckily around that time I'd received a BBC Arts uh, short film commission that kept me busy. Um, yeah, and as, as I mentioned, I just kind of finished a second master's at Bristol, which I was fortunately awarded funding for, which was amazing. Um, basically had to produce a thesis on the origins of the, the zombie genre and, and its connections with Haitian voodoo, which was really interesting. Um, and yeah, it was a really it was a really useful thing to do during a pandemic because it was quite flexible. Um, and and yeah, through that I've I've been I've now been employed to lead a couple of history seminars with first years this term. So it's quite exciting that I've, I'm kind of going down the teaching route a little bit as well. I'm, I'm also doing the film mentoring at Watershed, which starts again fairly soon. Again, that was something that came about through kind of prior networks that I built up. Um, and I'm also doing some film lecturing at Northampton University. And I mentioned that because ironically that just occurred through my mate's sister, but she only asked me to to kind of do it because she knows that I've been very active and that I've done a lot of stuff. So, it's, so you know, the more active you are, sometimes opportunities that you never would have imagined will, will kind of present themselves to you just because you've built up, even in your the circles that you already have and the connections through your own mutual friends and stuff. Um, like you know it will attract interest from people you already know if you're if you're being proactive and then opportunities can arise that way as well um yeah and if you're like me keeping fingers in in several pies allows your work opportunities to be nice nice and broad and diverse which i love essentially um though it can be a little bit hectic at times the, the Mandem platform has been paused a little bit by the pandemic because events have kind of just been off the cards for so long. Uh, but we're kind of thinking of making it into more of a charitable, pro a charitable project where we support young artists by giving them small grants. Um, the BBC Arts film is due to be released on iPlayer soon, I think. And the film, the feature film that me and my brother just completed uh, should be available soon too. Uh, I'll emphasize to any film students out there that the feature was totally done on our own backs with our own equipment, which was really tough. Um, it's, you know, it's not easy when you don't have access to too many resources. And that's again why university is brilliant because you just get access to so many cool things, so much cool stuff. You get particularly in the film course, you get amazing access to expensive industry level equipment. Um, and yeah, you, you really shouldn't waste it. It's, it's so it's so worthwhile making the what making the most of everything you have access to while while you're at university. Um, but also, 
another another word of advice to creative students would be don't be shy to take it upon yourself to create like independently because it is lovely to be paid for your work when you can but there will be a lot of unpaid work naturally um because that's just a, kind of the way the creative industry can be especially when you're starting out but it all it all contributes to a portfolio that will most certainly help you get future work um yeah just try and follow your passion don't be afraid to take risks or make bold decisions i was i was terrified of starting my own platform and and all the other mad stuff i've done but i'm so i'm so grateful that i didn't let my nerves paralyze me because it's all worthwhile in the end um even if a certain networking connection doesn't work out or an experimental project goes terribly wrong there'll always be something uh, to learn from it for sure so network like your life depends on it because the opportunities that life will offer you do genuinely depend on the networks you actively build i think i've just about hit 20 minutes ish thank you for listening Wow, Elias, that's amazing. Can you can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Um, that was so inspiring. I want to follow in your footsteps and I can't wait to see what you do next. And what I really liked about it is the kind of um, mix of um, sort of humility, but also really pursuing what your interests are. Um, so this has come from a place of you trying to kind of triangulate what you're genuinely interested with, with what what kind of opportunities come up. So it's really fantastic. So what's happening now is a Q and A. So if you want to put your Q and your questions in the chat, I'll feed them to Elias. Um, so there's a few things coming in, and I am going to ask um, somebody. Let's go straight for what do you do when you have a creative block? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I'm still trying to figure that out myself, I think. Uh, I think sometimes letting go is important and not, not giving up, but if, if, if you are suffering a bit of creative block and, you, and you, that's preoccupying your mind and you're just really trying to figure out how to get over the block, that, that sometimes is a bit problematic. So sometimes just taking a little break, you know, whether it's a few days, even a week, I think, just allows your subconscious subconscious to kind of let ideas mull over in your brain and and yeah I think yeah I think part of it is actually taking a break stepping back and, and allowing yourself to have a creative block and not and not panicking about it essentially that's kind of the approach that I'm trying to take that's a great um, answer there's another question uh, which I think is a great question as well which is how do you network without feeling like a leech um, uh, because oh it's disappeared the questions are moving about um, so building connections with others is vital but I just like the notion of talking to someone solely because they may be of professional use so so what's your advice for making it kind of mutually beneficial rather than just feeling like you're leeching off people yeah that's that's a really good question as well because I I've definitely I, I've worried about that before and if if you're going to a, an event that is specifically a networking event and it's designed for that then that's that's kind of fine to you know to to have the motivation of wanting to talk to someone from that kind of professional perspective because um that's what the event itself is designed for so i wouldn't worry if it's specifically a networking event um because the, the whole point of that is to be a bit of a leech to some degree um and and people would understand would understand that who are there if it's not specifically a networking event i think just you know it's it's a it's a it's a matter of how you present and and your and your manner you know i think there's, there's definitely a way to speak to people politely and, and from a humble place and and being honest as well you know you can you can be honest you know start by saying i don't want to i don't want to feel like a leech or be a leech but I'd really like some information about how I can do X, Y, and Z. Um, and and the you know people who are you know established in the industry or whatever are very aware that people who are starting out need to be proactive in in asking questions and networking. So I don't think they'll feel like they're being leached if they're if they're nice people. 
Um, there's a follow on question, um, which is um, what's a standard networking moment look like for you? Um, do you usually meet people through events or are there connections typically made with people that you meet through education and or work? So how do you, how do you make those contacts? Yeah, uh, good point. I might I'll maybe even bleed that into because I see another question about how would you make a connection with a famous person as well, like Gary Young or Loki? Um, so, yeah, what does networking look like? I mean, obviously, yeah, going to an event is is one way of doing it, but also it can be from researching online. You know, if you if there's like a particular newspaper or something that you you, you really like or a, or a um, a media platform or something you can you can have a look at the emails listed on their website and 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 see uh the specific person who works for that company that you might want to talk to you know and and there's no harm in dropping them an email like i think you know i must have done that loads of times just searched search for emails on on certain websites that i was interested in and and just drop drop people an email and just be polite and friendly and sure some some people won't reply but some people will um and that's one way you can do it and again in terms of uh meeting yeah networking with like higher profile people that again that came about through kind of mutual connections so um loki specifically the the musician was through a guy called uh, danny pandolfi who runs a poetry organization in bristol called raise the bar and I think I'd met him through because he'd also done work at the Arnold Feeney. So I kind of met him through that and then we got talking and I found out that he knew various people through through his work. So, yeah, sometimes it happens by, you know, meeting someone who knows someone and and you never know who knows who until you until you start networking, really. OK, so let's ask this one, um, which I think is really interesting. How do you keep a portfolio that allows anyone to view your work, which can bring you work opportunities without actively applying for jobs? Do you use Mandem or also LinkedIn, Instagram? What kind of platforms do you find useful? Yes, uh, so. I mean, it, it totally depends on, I suppose, what your creative practice, what your creative practice is. Um, for me specifically, I, Vimeo is, is a place where I, I have some of my work on offer to, to be seen. Um, yeah, it depends. Like, you know, I'm, LinkedIn is great. I haven't used it loads, but from, from what I've seen and heard from other people, it, it's, it's pretty useful. Um, in terms of a, a create, just, just having a, it's a, it's a bit of both. I don't think you, you just, you should just have a creative portfolio and, and wait for people to kind of contact you because that's kind of not the right way to go about it. I think you should still be actively looking for work and, and trying to apply for things where you can. Um, but a, a strong portfolio will naturally help with that. And and yeah, se sending your portfolio out to people as well is, is a good a good thing to do too, because they might then forward it on to someone else, et cetera, et cetera. OK. Um, so we've got questions here. Um, what made you get into film, apart from brother jealousy? <laughs> Why is film a useful medium for you for what you want to do? Yeah, so. Yeah, kind of, you know, what, the, ironically, obviously, I've always had a passion for film, but there was definitely something about my brother making the bold decision to choose a creative subject at uni that kind of made me think, why don't why don't I do a creative subject at uni instead of something that's slightly less creative? Um, but I think I don't know. I just I just I love storytelling. It's, it comes from a love of film as well, and and I, I, an enjoyment of editing. The first thing I really did was kind of editing, and that I really enjoyed. You know, assembling clips together just for fun, um, and that kind of led me into it. Uh, but 
sorry, what was the second question? What? what oh, do I... I mean, I'm 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 supplementing that question because I I've just watched your video in my heart. I don't know if um if you guys can put a link to it in the in the questions, which I think is a fantastic film and it really marries your intellectual pursuits with your filmmaking, because it's underlying it is the kind of the the Haitian kind of history and connection to to um the slave trade and so on. And I'm, I was just wondering, is filmmaking a useful medium for you to do what you were doing in the first degree that you applied for, which is to kind of address these social issues? And what, why is film a useful ish, kind of platform for you? Yeah. Yeah. And I was definitely aware of that when changing course. I think I was aware that, you know, especially for young people, we're just ever more in a in a visually stimulating world and we, we consume so much visual content. that I kind of started to feel like, yeah, if you want to kind of put messages out there and share information like film is is such a kind of visceral and um wide-reaching medium to do so so that was definitely a motivation uh for for getting into film too and and yeah i totally i totally hope that's something that i can do with my work i think it's quite exciting to be able to merge your passions that, that aren't you know outside of the creative world and, and bring them into the creative world through film and 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 it allows you to be a bit more experimental and provocative maybe with how you with how you are sharing the information itself like for example one my graduate film at ue was a film called samurai blood that you, which you can find on youtube but um it was inspired by a famous african samurai who essentially traveled from somewhere in east africa to japan in the 16th century and it was really interesting because it was at a time when there was conversations about hollywood whitewashing things and um i kind of incorporated that into the film so there's kind of this like self-awareness that or an, an analysis of who who has the right to tell certain stories from history and and that's only kind of possible to do in a film kind of context so yeah that's fascinating i want to talk to you for hours and i was, um i want to combine two of the questions because i think we might be running out of time and um there was a question about how you remain disciplined in what you do and another one about motivating yourself and overcoming um it says handling the hate and self-doubt so i don't i don't know whether you've got hate uh, but you did mention having self-doubt and kind of just not listening to it and getting on with it so i think you know how do you keep yourself going mm -hmm. yeah that's a that's the most important question probably uh i think it's, so, it's something i still struggle with now i don't think it's ever something that will go away i'm sure even the people who are established in the industry and famous and whatever struggle with motivation um as well and it's it's a tricky one, yeah. It's definitely a very a very tricky thing. Um, in terms of how I've overcome self doubt, you know, I think I like to I like to I've put myself in uncomfortable situations and things that make me nervous. So there is a little bit of a like, you know, just jump in deep deep end and hope that you can swim kind of attitude that I've I've adopted. Uh, and I think that is important. I think because because not only because if you push through things that make you nervous then you're likely to be less nervous about what it was you you went for in the first place and then you know that's that's already a hurdle uh broken down um but no, another thing that i do as well is is you know watch watch videos you know you can whatever your creative practice is on youtube will have plenty of, of videos of you know for me particularly whether it's just writers screenwriters filmmakers talking about their own their own anxieties and their self-doubt and, and their advice for for overcoming that stuff that, that i always find really useful and, and it helps to kind of re-inspire me um for sure and there's a, a question which is like for people who are just starting out that maybe they haven't got a really sexy portfolio to share that would go, garner attention how would you suggest that they go about forming those connections and making themselves known um, do they just have to go out there and get that portfolio together or you know not worry about that or how, how would you overcome that you know do you need you haven't quite got the skill set level uh, just reading the question to create something impactful enough to warrant much attention from people and companies outside uni what what do you say to that yeah well firstly every everyone starts there so 
everyone was once in that position of not having anything. Um, I mean, for me specifically, when I, you know, because I, I applied for a film course and I hadn't really made any films, so I kind of panicked a bit and realised that, you know, I had to make some stuff. So I, I, I think I borrowed a DSLR camera from from someone, from my brother maybe at the time, who had it f through school, um, and I went out and and just filmed filmed some random stuff. Just even going out in nature and just filming, just filming anything, anything and everything, essentially. Um, even if you go on like holiday somewhere, or, you know, and, and create a little journal or a vlog type thing or like anything just to get you familiar with the equipment is, is a brilliant starting point. Because I think one thing that I definitely advocate is getting yourself um, familiar with with the tools of whatever your cre creative practice is is super important because it will just make future work a lot easier um, so yeah just just start small and and be patient you know it's like you're not you're not going to have an incredible portfolio overnight but yeah slowly but surely you, you can you can get there for sure yeah I think that's just don't, don't feel underconfident and just kind of start making stuff um, yeah, and the final question was going to be, now that you're here with Mandemhood, um, established along with your name, what are some of the things you wish you did differently when you were starting out and starting to grow? That's a that's a that's a tough one. Um, I try and live a life of no regret. Um, what what might I have done differently? Um, probably just be be more confident even though i'm sure i was you know it was it required a bit of confidence to go around networking just you know be you know be less be more feel fearless as well and and not afraid to to connect with people and speak to people who i didn't know um yeah i i don't know maybe asking for help more as well from whether it be your peers your lecturers um, that's something that maybe I, I could have done more of is is instead of trying to do everything myself, just just asking for more more support as well, more advice and stuff from friends. Uh, yeah. It's a great answer. So be fearless and ask for more support. And I think we've run out of time. I wanted to ask about what you're doing next. So just briefly to wrap up, if you could just say what's next on your radar. You're going to go and teach at Bristol Uni. Um, you're developing a a feature about uh, based on your voodoo in my heart so about the zombies just set tell us a bit about that yeah so it's a very very slow process as you might imagine but yeah i have i have i feel like i'm in the very early stages of developing um a, a feature film that kind of pays respect to the the early zombie genre um inspired by kind of british folk horrors like the wicker man and and things like that and and new ones like Midsummer, so I'm kind of yeah tentatively developing a script for that at the moment and yeah there's a little bit of interest as well from production companies which is which is quite exciting so just have to be nice and patient and try and get over my own creative blocks that I that I am suffering sometimes. And listen to yourself be more fearless and ask for support. Um, Exactly. That was absolutely fantastic, and I'm so um, excited for where you've got to in such a short time after graduating. And I'm glad that um, you genuinely feel that UE's helped that, and we aren't paying you. Um, and you have gone to the dark side, but it looks like that's been a really good move. Um, the the work you're doing with Bristol Uni, and good luck with your teaching. Um, and I hope that's been useful for everyone listening who's um, still at UE or thinking of coming here. Um, yeah, I'm really, really delighted to hear how you're getting on and can't wait to see what you do next. Thanks so much. Yes, thank you. Thank you.